work less, help out more. Uh, this is the next, uh, uh, this, uh, next presentation. Uh, the persistence of gender inequality in housework and childcare during UK COVID-19. I think that's a very interesting topic. Uh, this is brought to us by Anna Zemberlan, Filippo Jochen and Davide Gritti, three uh, PhD candidates in sociology and social research at the School of Social Sciences and University of Trento. So, uh, Anna, uh, I think the floor is yours. Oh, thank you very much for, for the introduction and good afternoon to everyone. So yeah, we can directly go to the next slide since you already uh, introduced us all. Um, so in this paper, we focus on the fact that the pandemic has led to substantial changes in terms of employment status and working hours. And we know from previous uh, literature that labor changes may have non-economic effects on a variety of life outcomes, including also the gender division of domestic tasks. Um, and the peculiarity of the lockdown situation is that uh, uh, reduction in working hours uh, inevi in inevitably led to an increase in hours spent within the house. Next, please. And so the research question in this paper is whether the reduction in working hours during the first strict lockdown in the UK led heterosexual partners to reallocate time dedicated to housework and childcare. And we further ask whether this time reallocation is moderated by the type of household in terms of partners' relative contribution to total labor income. So we distinguish male breadwinner, female breadwinner, and uh, families in which both members contribute equally to total labor income. Next, please. Um, we, we had three uh, competing expectations which are informed by existing literature on the topic and the first one um, draws on the time availability perspective. So according to this approach, so we should focus on the fact that during lockdown, the increased use of the house and the unavailability of, of schools and daycare centers plausibly increased the need for both housework and childcare. And at the same time, working hours decreased for both men and women and so um, time available increased. The hypothesis here is that uh, involvement in housework and childcare should increase in step with the reduction in working hours. Next, please. A more economic approach instead is the so-called relative resources perspective, according to which the family member with more resources, which we operationalize here as the monetary breadwinner, is in the position to bargain domestic tasks away. And this is independent from um, the amount of housework and childcare to be performed and from working hours. So the hypothesis here is that uh, monetary breadwinners will not alter the time they devote to housework and childcare even after a reduction in working hours. Next slide. And finally, a more cultural approach, the so-called twin gender approach, which states that deviance from traditional gender norms indicating the man as the income earner and the woman as the caregiver trigger counter reactions aimed to display gender or to neutralize deviance. The hypothesis here is that women will increase the time they devote to domestic labor and men will decrease it um, in deviant situations, such as when the man's paid hours reduce or when the woman is the chief breadwinner. Next, please. So we rely on understanding society on the understanding society COVID-19 study, which is uh, drawn from the longitudinal house, household sample of the UK household longitudinal study. And it provides monthly level information collected both cross-sectionally, starting from April 2020, and retrospectively, so referred to January and February 2020. Um, data was collected through web surveys, uh, and overall it had a lower response rate compared to the usual sample of the UK household longitudinal study. But technical reports um, indicate an acceptable level of bias. So this data uh, really provides a huge amount of information and is overall reliable. We focus specifically on the April wave, so the first one, to focus on the first strict lockdown. We link this data with the, uh, what was the last wave, wave nine of the UK household longitudinal study to retrieve important information which are not uh, contained in the COVID-19 study, such as partner ID and recent job related details. Next, please. 
So uh, in the end, we have got a data set with uh, collecting information about three points in time. And in particular, we are uh, interested in a loss of working hours occurring between the, what we define as the baseline period, so January and February 2020, and the moment of this first strict lockdown, so April 2020. Next, please. Uh, our sample uh, consists of cohabiting heterosexual couples in which both members are aged less than 65. And in particular, we work with a household sample and a more selective childcare sample, which, is, uh, which consists of uh, parents, so people providing information on childcare. Next, please. Um, so, to, to tell you a little bit about the analytical strategy, at the couple level, we define uh, households in which no reduction in working hours occurred. that this is our reference group, and then uh, only the man, only the woman, or both members uh, decreased working hours. The dependent variable is a relative measure, uh, the female share of the sum of partners hours spent in household and childcare, which are analysed separately. Next, please. Um, and what we do is to compare equivalent couples, relying on the selection on observable assumption, in which only the work involvement has changed between the baseline period and the first lockdown. Um, so in practice, we perform less regressions, including potential observed confounders. Next, please. Okay, and now I, I can show you the main results of this paper. Um, we can go to the next slides. So here you can see the percentage predicted female share of the total amount of time devoted by the couple to housework in the top panels and childcare in the bottom panels. Um, so as you can see, uh, next please. Um, I want to highlight the results for the male breadwinner households in which uh, in the x-axis you can see all the possible uh, scenarios in which none uh, of the partners lost working hours, only the man, the woman or both lost them. In the case in which the man, who is the breadwinner here, lost working hours during the first lockdown, um, the female share slightly decreases. But the difference with the reference category, which is the very first estimate you can see in the graph, is not statistically significant. So um, breadwinner men who lost working hours didn't significantly increase time devoted to housework. Next, please. In female breadwinner households, we find some interesting uh, results too, because in this case, if the man lost working hours, we see really no difference with the reference category, which is the first estimate. But if the woman who is the breadwinner here lost working hours, she disproportionately increased time devoted especially to housework, also denoting the highest marginal difference with the reference category in which uh, none of the partners lost working hours. Next, please. So the take-home message here will be that um, would seem to me that um, since there is a higher additional commitment of women in case of a reduction in their working hours, the time availability hypothesis um, does not really fit what we find empirically. And we find instead some evidence in favor of the relative resources perspective, because in male breadwinner households, we see men um, who don't really increase their uh, involvement in domestic labor, even after a reduction in working hours. Um, and finally, we find in female breadwinner households the likely presence of two in gender dynamics, because um, since female breadwinner households are um, a um, deviant uh, situation compared to traditional gender norms, in this case, we see um, an irrational and a disproportionate increase of female time devoted to unpaid labor following a reduction in working hours. Next, please. But then uh, we updated the data available, um, and, and so I can show you some really new results which are unpublished yet. Um, next, please. So since uh, the, the COVID study collects information monthly, um, in the first paper we focused on April to focus on the first lockdown, but then we updated the data set with, uh, um, with data on four uh, later time points until January 2021. In this case, there might be some possible uh, attribution issues, but overall we provide some descriptive findings which shouldn't be biased by, by any attrition. And in any case, the number of cases is sufficient to provide some interesting insights. Next, please. 
So what you can see in this graph is the distribution of changes in working hours across couples in percentages, and depending on whether working hours were lost in, uh, in the, during the first lockdown, who lost working hours, and whether the hours were recovered or not over the following months. Um, so overall, what you can see is that uh, in most of the couples, at least one member lost working hours. And you can see it in the blue, orange, and red bars. And among these couples, um, most of them uh, didn't recover in the following months, as indicated by the darker uh, color of the bars. Next, please. And here you can see basically the, the, the same type of graphs of graph I showed you before. So with the predicted percentage female share of couples time dedicated to housework and childcare, but over time and depending on whether working hours were recovered or not. Next, please. So in case in which the men lost working hours during the first lockdown, the immediate reaction, as indicated by the first circles in the figures, um, was a slight increase in gender equality because the female share is here lower. But over time, as you can see, uh, this wasn't really maintained and it is especially the case of childcare here. So initial levels of inequality were restored. Next, please. In case instead in which the woman lost working hours, uh, the first estimates indicate an overall, uh, overall higher gender inequality, so the female share increases. And this seems to be actually maintained over time because um, the estimates never go back to initial values as indicated by the green dashed line, which refers to the reference group, so couples in which none lost working hours. Next, please. So here, the take-home message is that uh, the short reaction to a loss of working hours was actually an increase in time dedicated to unpaid labor by the partner who decreased working hours in paid labor. But in situations in which the shock led to more gender inequality, this seemed to last in the following months too. If the shock instead led to more gender equality, for example, when the man lost working hours, um, this didn't last for long because we see a fast increase in the female share of time devoted to unpaid labor. So overall, what we find is a general disposition of all couples to settle into a gender unequal equilibrium. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Anna. That was very interesting to see how you made use of the of data that are already out there uh, and the research that you've performed with that. Thank you very much.